This is Super Yacht News with Eve Sisman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. So in last Friday's Yacht Spot, we talked about Joe Lewis and his 98 meter Super Yacht Aviva, which is worth an estimated $250 million. Well, Mr. Lewis has been in the news recently as he was accused of insider trading by a New York court last year. We covered it at the time. Now, Lewis is thought to have a personal fortune in excess of 5.8 billion pounds, which is over $7 billion, one of the richest men in the UK. He placed his super yacht and an aircraft as collateral for a $300 million bond at the time. That was in July last year, and he was told he could not use the yacht while the case was ongoing. When charged in July of last year, Lewis pled not guilty. Now in court papers, the prosecutor said that Lewis had learned secrets about public companies after making large investments. They said that on at least four occasions, he tipped off his girlfriend, personal pilots, employees, and friends, uh, enabling them to profit from those secrets. The pilots were also charged for insider trading on July of 2023 and also pled not guilty at the time. Now, the US attorney for the Southern District of New York, where the case was brought, said in a statement that Lewis, on multiple occasions over the course of several years, misused and misappropriated this confidential information to provide stock tips to various individuals in his life, including his employees, romantic partners, and friends uh, as a way to provide them with compensation and gifts. These individuals in turn traded on the tips provided by Mr. Lewis for vast personal gain. And the prosecutors alleged that in 2019, Lewis even went as far as loaning his two pilots $500,000 each so that they could buy shares in Mirati Therapeutics stock before the public release of the clinical results. One of the pilots allegedly then messaged a friend suggesting that he also buy the stock, telling them he thought the boss had inside info. Now, like I, I always say, billionaires hate to spend money, especially their own. Uh, and this seems like it was a way for Mr. Lewis to be able to give them money without actually it being his own money, right? Uh, now, in January of this year, Lewis changed his plea, pleading guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit securities fraud and two counts of securities fraud under an arrangement with the US Attorney's Office in Manhattan. Lewis addressed the court saying, I'm so ashamed and I apologize to the court for my conduct. Sentencing was just last week. Uh, the Daily Mail said that the majority of insider trading cases result in prison time. However, David Zarnow, uh, attorney for Joe Lewis, successfully argued that prison would be catastrophic for Lewis given his age and physical health. Addressing the judge before the sentencing, he said, you have uh, before you a frail 87 year old man with significant health challenges whose condition has only deteriorated since the indictment. Uh, when she announced the sentence, the judge said, it is clear to me that Mr. Lewis's life would be at serious risk if he were to be incarcerated. Uh, Lewis received a three year suspended prison sentence on the grounds that his medical condition would have meant prison would have had a negative effect on his health. A fine, a personal fine of $5 million now, the prosecutor said afterwards that the company Broad Bay Limited would pay $50 million in financial penalties, together with Lewis's fine of $5 million, means it's the largest such penalty for insider trading in the last decade. His yacht, Aviva, was laid up in Malta the entire time he was unable to use the yacht, but left shortly after he was sentenced and has now been cruising around the Med, having covered over 400 nautical miles since the court case ended, suggesting he is back on board. Now, let us know what you think. Uh, do you think he should have gone to prison or not? Let us know in the comments. All right, we'll move on to our next story. This is Fedship's latest build has been launched at the construction shed at the Macken facility in the Netherlands. Fedship press release says about the vessel, this is one reason why the owner decided to build a shop was to have more spacious beach club in the stern. In fact, project 1012, that hasn't been named yet, at the beach club occupies fully one quarter of the total length of the lower deck and the very large fixed platform combines with two uh, fold down platforms to create 165 square meters of water level lounge space. That's quite, quite incredible. 
As the press release continues, the propulsion plant and onboard energy management has been developed, incorporating state-of-the-art FedShip technology. She carries full hybrid electric class notation and comprises of two main engines and shaft-driven fixed-pitch propellers, coupled with PTO, PTI electric motors of 560 kilowatts each and one megawatt of lithium-ion batteries. Now, PTO and PTI electric motors basically means that they're generators that are attached to the main engines by a shaft or shaft generator you might have heard that phrase before uh, and they're powered by the main engines now they have these two modes pto and pti pto is uh, it means um, power takeoff mode meaning the generator supplies power to the main power grid on board so they don't have to use the auxiliary generators so the engine runs powers that um that generator the, the, the shaft generator, and that, all, that then supplies power to the uh, rest of the, of the vessel. Now in power take-in mode, the generator can boost the main engine power, so it helps to turn the shaft of the propeller. Uh, now FedShip says that in addition to conventional diesel propulsion mode, the e-motors work as shaft generators, as I've just described, and produce electricity to serve the hotel loads or recharge the battery bank, as well as for low speed navigation, while the generators or batteries generate the required electrical power. So in other words, they can, the e-motors can produce electricity for the main grid. Uh, they can recharge the lithium ion batteries. This is whilst the engines are running while the vessel's underway, or they can actually be used at, as propulsion at low speeds. So it, it, in, in the last instance, the power to make those generators turn the shaft would have to come from the auxiliary generators or they could use the um, one megawatt of lithium ion batteries. Now the, these systems are very good when you're in places like uh, the Galapagos Islands, when they want to be as clean as possible when they're moving around. So very interesting uh, equipment there. Obviously the reason for the shaft generators is to reduce the running of auxiliary generators, therefore using less fuel. Now Albert Abma, the FedShip project manager said that working with the experienced owner, designers and owners team has been a professional pleasure and has resulted in this modern classic state-of-the-art and full custom new FedShip. And the owner they refer to is, we believe, the Spaniard Amancio Ortega, uh, as this yacht will be the replacement for Moti Yacht Drizzle. Ortega is now 88 years old, and his source of wealth is, amongst other things, the clothing store Zara. All right, guys, it's time for our Friday Yacht Spot. Uh, we've got quite a few today. First on the list, we've got from the ESIS Man Sea Dog Troy from City Centre Yachts. He sent us some footage of Mark Zuckerberg's new support vessel, Wingman. Uh, you can see Wingman here uh, being assisted into her berth in Port Everglades uh, by two mini tugboats. Uh, pretty busy bridge there, people on both sides, uh, on both bridge wings, but the captain will most likely be on the starboard side. He may have switched over as the vessel moved through that. Uh, through that through that positioning there. Uh, you can probably, uh, you, it, the starboard side, by the way, is the right-hand side as you look forward from the bridge. The, the next boat on the list is the 96-meter or 316-foot yacht, Moti Yacht Limitless. This is sent in by Andy Gray. I believe this video is in Corfu, I'm not 100% on that. Uh, it's very rare sight to see this, not because the yacht is a blue hole, but because the yacht happens to be one of only a handful of yachts flying a US flag. They got special permission to be able to go around the laws at the time. Uh, if you want to know more about that, the, the US flag thing, I'll post a link here to a video that we, we made recently, which talks about the complications of flying a US flag. Now, this yacht was built by Lurson in 1997, has a gross tonnage of 2200, top speed of 25 knots, which is impressive for yachts as they're not really known for those top speeds. The yacht is valued at around $100 million and is owned by the American owner, uh, Les Wexner. You must be American to register your yacht in the US. All right, some other quick fire yacht spots around the world. First one, this is Moti Yacht Mayan Queen 4 in Carlisle Bay in Barbados, taken on the 16th of March by Greg Cook. We have an unknown sailing yacht in Casablanca in Morocco, sent in by someone who wishes to remain anonymous. But definitely thanks for sending in from that location. We've never had anything from there before. If you know the name of the yacht, by the way, please uh, let us know in the comments. Uh, the next boat on the list is Motor Yacht Sunrays in Rhodes, sent in by Ian Barrett on the 27th of January 2024. Uh, and the last one is Moti Yacht Yerson, spotted cruising off. Uh, the, the guy was on a ferry who took the photograph in Guadeloupe on the 1st of March, 2024. 
Thanks to everyone who sent in photos or videos. And as you can see by the dates, we keep everything we receive, we put it into a folder, and then we pull it out for you know yacht spots. Or if we're going to talk about the yacht, we'll take it from there and then we'll put it on the screen. Now uh, we'll finish with this video posted by uh, High Rise Trini on X. He says that they brought in the cavalry of firefighters to this yacht, but there was no fire. So I'm not quite sure what's happening here. It's possibly that they were training uh, to, you know, that's why there's so many people there. So there's people teaching, people learning, stuff like that, maybe training. Or maybe there was a very small fire that was put out before any smoke came to the outside. You know, you could that could be seen on the outside of the vessel. If you actually know for sure what was happening, please let us know. All right, one more thing before we go. We have a new feature coming out on Sunday. Please be sure to watch and share it if you enjoy. The new feature is, well, let me explain, was AIS. But what is AIS? What's it for? How does it work? And why is it so important? You'll find out in this video. All right, so you'll all be experts on the technology by the end of that video. Video will be live on Sunday at 1400 hours UTC. All right, please be sure to join us on Patreon. You can support the channel and we have extra videos to go with the new feature that's been released on Sunday. And if you can't wait until Sunday to watch the video, that video is already live on Patreon and it's advert free. Now, if you've got any information for us about any of the stories here or any other stories, please be sure to get in touch. You can get us in the email address and the ticket. You can get us on the about page of the YouTube channel, get us on Instagram, Facebook Messenger, on Twitter and on Threema. Be sure to like this video, very important for the algorithm. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for future notifications. All right, guys, thanks very much. Whatever you're doing at the weekend, be sure to have a good one. Be sure to watch our video as well that I just mentioned on, uh, on Sunday at 2 p.m. UTC time. All right, guys, bye-bye.